my name is Annie and I am a knitwear designer and yarn dyer living south of Atlanta, Georgia. Thank you so much for stopping by my podcast today. As we know, there's just something about yarn that brings us together. If you are a returning viewer, welcome back. I really appreciate you bearing with all of my tests and things with video, audio, and makeup while I work on revamping the podcast. If you're a new viewer, well, just a word of warning that I can be a little bit random sometime and sometimes the faux hawk kind of has a mind of its own so you might have to bear with a little bit of wonkiness sometimes but if you're every bit as weird as I am then we should be fine. Today is gray and rainy and miserable here in Georgia and I am thinking about all the dark and moody knits and yarn colors and all of that. If you are on my Instagram, you will have seen <laughs> yesterday's mood was very similar with the um, photo collage that I posted. So yeah, I wanted to go ahead and capitalize on that and kind of, or not capitalize on it, but like bring that out with what I'm wearing today. Thought it would be fun. Um, before I launch into that though, just a quick reminder for those of you who are stocking the Fantastic Socks Club in my shop. We do still have some available. They'll be available um, through the end of the month or whenever I hit capacity. Um, the ones with the bags by the Ginger U, my buddy Cheryl, are going fast. They are selling first. <laughs> so if you want to get in on that, um, we picked some really, really awesome fabrics for that cannot wait to get those in your hands but anyway um so yeah that's still going on i am let's see what else oh i am um going to be putting together the february sock club reveal soon that'll be going up this week since all of the packages have landed um I'll also be putting together the March teaser. So if you're wanting to get into Sock Yarn Monthly, definitely make sure to get in on that. My colorway this month is gonna be playing off of my 30th birthday as I am a March baby. So um, I'm kind of, <clears throat> excuse me, putting together a pin board of some of my favorite things to pull from for that colorway. I'm thinking there are gonna be some speckles involved and probably some of my favorite colors. So those of you um, who have been with me for a while, if you know what my favorite colors are, don't spoil it for anybody else, okay? I want it to be a surprise. So yeah, I think that's it for ad mini things. Um, yeah, that's it. So first, what's in my cup? So today I decided to drink coffee instead of tea. Sometimes on rainy days I gravitate toward tea, but today was a coffee day. So um, I pulled out my hand-thrown pottery mug from a local um, cafe here in downtown Noonan, which is uh, very close by me. It's about 15 minutes away. Um, it's called Leaf and Bean, one of my favorite little cafes to go and hang out. Um, I would love to start a knitting group there, but you never know. Um, <laughs> so yeah, I just got some organic uh, regular coffee. Not my local roast that I prefer, also done in Noonan, but yeah, it's okay. I don't get over to the farmer's market to grab some of that as often as I would like because they're um, only open on Saturday mornings and <laughs> I work Saturday mornings most days. So anyway, um, yeah, so I'm drinking coffee. Um, I've got International Delight Hershey's Chocolate Caramel Creamer in here, and it's really good. It's a lovely blend of like chocolate and caramel. So as far as what I'm wearing today, I decided to kind of go with the gray and blue mood of the weather. <laughs> so I pulled out my foraging cardigan love 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 this cardigan it's a shawl front as you can see and um, three-quarter length sleeves I love it because with these eyelets it's like really light and airy but it's still warm this is my hand dyed yarn now this is a base that's been discontinued this is my Madison sport or was it Annie sport I think it was an 80 20 mix uh, nylon um, superwash merino and nylon I think it's my old Annie sport um, so discontinue. I did knit this quite a while ago. Um, but yeah, I like it cause you can kind of do that number. 
um, or like tuck one end in like this. And I'm hopping all over the place. I'm sorry, I just interrupted myself. I was talking about the yarn and yeah, it's my tarnished silver <laughs> colorway, which is still around. Um, but yeah, if I wanted to put a button to like hold it like this, I could, or like a shawl pin or something. Um, I usually just wear it open because I love how it just kind of curls around itself and kind of flows. Um, but yeah, I knitted this, gosh, I started it like 2014. I think I finished it in 16, I feel like. So yeah, I love pulling it out and wearing it. Um, doesn't cover the tattoos very well. <laughs> <laughs> so I can't really wear it to work, but I definitely enjoy pulling it out for like going to knit night or anything like that. You know, um, it's just, it's nice and cozy, especially going into spring. It is a perfect spring knit. So um, I can link to my Ravelry project and the pattern in the down bar and you can check it out yourself. Okay, so finished objects. Um, I finished my socks finished finished and I'm, I'm not I'm not hip enough to have a or cool enough to have a sock blocker set yet definitely looking into that so you'll have to just bear with me with the little floppy socks right now <laughs> so anyway yep these are my um, socks out of the hey sister yarn co sock kit that I was lucky enough to score in their final uh, shop update before they closed and I am in love as y'all know from my ranting about them and waxing poetic last week so I won't go too far into it but quick recap um, two by two rib cuff in I believe is 60 stitches which now that I've worn them a little bit I feel like is a little bit too loose for my feet I have really really skinny feet and high arches so I think the next pair I make for myself I will go down in stitch count but these are like around the house slouchy socks, so it's fine. <laughs> but anyway, um, two by two rib cuff, 60 stitches, a uh, 2.5 millimeter needle, nine inch circular. Um, I just used one of the mini skeins from the kit to do the cuff. And then I did this little stripe here after three rounds of the main color, just to kind of give some texture, contrast, interest, whatever. Um, and then I just knitted straight down stockinette for, I wanna say, 70 rounds or so and then I pulled the other mini and fish lips kiss heel love oh my gosh like if you have not knitted a fish lips kiss heel you need to because wow oh my gosh I will never do another kind of heel again basically I mean okay well unless it's like a super decorative heel and um, you know but for most things I will probably even if the pattern doesn't call for it, I will convert it to a fish lips kiss heel because yeah I am <laughs> I'm sold <laughs> but anyway um after I did that I picked back up continuing with the main color and knitted I want to say for like maybe 50 rounds or so I can't remember I have it all written down not that it matters really because it's custom fit to me but anyway and then I did the same little dealio here with a single come on there we go. A single stripe of the uh, third color, three rounds of main, and then I did the toes in the third color. And then I, I just did the basic, you know, um, decrease toe and then Kitchener, the end, because I like the shape and I like how it looks. So, I don't even know like what to call these. They're just vanilla socks with a little bit of pizzazz with the yarn and the three colors being used so I don't know um but yeah so that's my finished object for this week I worked monogamously on these um as y'all remember from last episode may remember from last episode and so that is the only finished object that I have um I don't even have a half object this week even though I will go right into my works in progress right now and show you um, still living in my sock bag from the Ginger U. Still living, I say that because that pair of socks is done. So I immediately cast on another pair. So, yeah. So there's one on my circulars. Now, 
what I did was, <laughs> um, I did not have my boyfriend on hand because I was on my lunch break at work when I got to this point. But basically I did the same kind of recipe all in one color as I did for mine. Um, I went up to 64 stitches for his after consulting with my knitting mama. Um, <clears throat> she said that for her sons, she usually does 64 stitches. Um, I did the German, oh, I did the German twisted cast on, on both of these so that the cup is really stretchy. But um, anyway, 64 stitches. I did um, fish slips, kiss heel, and then kept going. And I went ahead and I just put it on some scrap yarn until I could have him try it on last night and find out how much farther I need to go before I do the toe. So um, I was bored and I didn't want to go too long with this. So I put it on the scrap yarn anyway at work on my lunch break and went ahead and started the second sock because I needed something to do. So um, <laughs> one of them is coming from the outside of the yarn and the other one is coming from the center. So it's interesting. It's kind of tangly most of the time in my bag but um it was a necessity i had to have something to do the rain was so bad yesterday it just it was a slow day anyway and i was just like oh my gosh i just uh, you know so anyway um <laughs> if you live in georgia or somewhere who where um i mean it's basically been four or five days of rain a couple days of sun ish mostly clouds and then right back to rain and then it's going up and down in temperature like crazy. So my sinuses and my ears and everything are all whacked out. Um, so yeah, I feel like I'm living more like in the Pacific Northwest or somewhere that has a lot of rain. So anyway, yeah, I'm going a little bit. So the yarn that I'm using is, of course, my hand dyed yarn. This is 8020 sock in the dark denim colorway. And yes. I am gonna do with this what I did with Dark Tarnished Silver and find a better name for it. I just haven't thought of anything. If you have any suggestions, let me know because it is gorgeous. Oh my gosh. There we go. It's beautiful. So yeah, it's uh, not quite as much progress as, whoops, as it was there was last week on my other pair, but I did have a slight delay in that I had to have him try this on. But it fits perfectly, oh my gosh. Yes, it is perfect. And he's like, oh, it feels funny. And I'm like, why? What? what? He's like, well, my toes are sticking out. Oh my gosh, dude, yeah, okay, fine. He scared me for a minute there because I'm thinking what feels funny <laughs> in the project itself. I'm like, do I need to rip it out? Anyway, so yeah. Um, happily knitting away on those, um, working on some podcasts to catch up on, stuff like that. So yeah, I am feeling my mental energy kind of come back a little bit every day. So I'm thinking I'll probably be starting into some of my other projects that require more brain power pretty soon here. So hopefully next week I will have more to show for my knitting time other than just socks, socks, socks. Although <laughs> I will say also the sock knitting bug is definitely at, well, when I finish his socks, I'll probably cast on another pair. I'm already thinking about what I want to pull from my stash and because, and also because, um, I just, like I mentioned last time, um knitting with the two ply yarn oh my gosh i missed it so much um i have a couple of skeins in two ply in my stash that are just kind of eyeballing me right now and uh, yeah we'll see you'll find out next week i guess <laughs> well guys i think that is it as far as actual like knitting um content <laughs> like what i've been doing now i will go ahead and show you and as some of you protested me unraveling my campsite card again but i did <laughs> i'm sorry guys <laughs> it was just it was too and there's even more yarn over there somewhere um but it was just wow my yarn got caught on my necklace 
Golly, how did that even happen? Oh, yeah, that's right. It's me. I hurt myself on air. I'm such a klutz. So why am I surprised? Crisis averted. <laughs> anyway. So yeah, um, Michael and Allison, my best friend, and I were all hanging out. And I just grabbed the cardigan and started unraveling it while we were talking because I knew that if I sat and did it by myself, I would start crying. Even then, <laughs> with conversation and funny and laughing and stuff being a distraction, I still almost started crying. But they helped me and it was very nice. <laughs> and when it got to be really small, we put it on Desi's head and it was really funny. And I will <laughs> share a photo of that here <laughs> because it was really, really cute. <laughs> It's all unraveled now. I did just hand wind it into um, just a bunch of cute little hand wound balls. I love, okay, maybe not. There we go. I love the look of hand wound balls, but I know that as soon as I start um, unwinding it to knit, it's going to be doing this number right here where it's like really wavy from being knitted and sitting there knitted for like two years. So I'm thinking what I'll do is pull out my, um, my big scanner, my uh, crazy monkey creations, I think is what it's called. My big scanner that I use to rescan yarn when I do it, <clears throat> um, and just put it back into skeins, um, put ties and then soak them as though I just dyed them basically, um, without vinegar, of course, but, <laughs> um, let them soak and dry and just kind of relax and chill for a while before I, cause I'm, I'm not quite ready to cast on the farm, farm twist jacket yet. Farm twist, did I get that right? Ah, I have it printed out and it's sitting over there, but anyway, um, I'm not quite ready to cast that on yet cause I'm still in sock land. So, um, but yeah, just wanted to give a quick update on that, even though it's not actual knitting yet. I am in the process. <laughs> um, so yeah, the hard part's done. Unraveling the campsite. And again, nothing against the pattern. It was fully all my fault for just kind of not paying attention and being, oh, it'll be fine. You know how that goes. Definitely going to be starting that hopefully in the next couple of weeks. I will, of course, as ever, keep y'all posted. Well, I did not dye any yarn in the last week. I'm kind of on a, um, like a bi-weekly rotation, um, with yarn dyeing right now just to, um, cause I'm still, you know, feeling like if I inhale <laughs> too much of the steam and, you know, stuff like that, I'm still feeling it in my lungs a little bit from the bronchitis. It's been a month and a half almost, no, not quite. <clears throat> and I'm still, you know, kind of feeling it. Um, my, I have most of my strength back, just not my endurance. So, you know, being active for a long time tires me out a lot more quickly. So I'm trying to pace myself and just kind of slowly get back to a weekly dye schedule. Um, but until then, um, I will probably be dyeing some yarn. I will be definitely dyeing some yarn this week. According to my notes, I am toward the end of the podcast. <laughs> And I feel like I've been rambling a, a lot, so um, most of what I just said in the last few minutes will probably be cut out, <laughs> um, because I'm trying to keep my episodes closer to about 30 minutes just for uh, time's sake, because on my off days, I do typically have a lot to get done, and I want to make sure that I can keep putting a podcast out every week if possible. So I will go ahead and head on into life stuff. Um, if you don't really care about all that and you just came for the knitting, then I will see you next week. But, um, if you would like to hear some of the things that I've been doing outside of yarny things, then you are welcome to stay and talk for a little bit longer. Um, so I wanted to kind of talk about like what I'm reading, watching, playing, because I am a video gamer. So, um, I'm not a hardcore video gamer, like... I don't have the latest and greatest or, you know, that kind of thing, but I play Xbox and I love playing. As you can see, there's my Xbox. <laughs> um, lately, mostly what I've been using it for is YouTube and Prime Video and <laughs> stars, <laughs> not games. So, cause I've been sitting, I have a Papa's on chair in here 
um, and I just sit in it and watch stuff. So um, I haven't really been reading a whole lot, although Sarah J. Moss's new book just came out, and I do plan on going to grab a copy at Barnes & Noble this week so I can start that, hopefully get back into reading because I really do miss it. I just need to figure out a way to set the, prop the book up and be able to read and knit at the same time. Eat my papa's on chair where it's comfortable. I'm still thinking about that one. But anyway, I really need to get back into reading. I miss it. It's just, it's wonderful, especially when it's an author like Sarah Damos that just sweeps you away in, oh yes. So if you haven't read any of her books, she wrote, uh, she wrote the Throne of Glass series and A Court of Thorns and Roses. And this is a new series that she is starting. First book just came out, so I am super excited. Cannot wait to get my paws on that. As far as what I'm watching, Outlander, definitely the new season. Although I will say, this week's episode really like creeped me out. If you're watching it, you know why. If you're not watching it, or may watch it, or whatever, <laughs> haven't caught up, I won't go into it. But I did not like it at all. So, yeah, I'm not going to talk about it very much because I, I would prefer to kind of just block it out. I don't want to dwell on it, you know? So yeah, I hope the next episode is a little bit less creepy <laughs> and a little bit more interesting. Um, so yeah, I haven't been doing a whole lot of gaming either. I do have a game that I am looking forward to, oh my gosh, so much, and it is the sequel to Ori and the Blind Forest. If you're not a gamer... I guess you can skip over this <laughs> this segment, but um, if you are a gamer and you love, um, I play Xbox, like I said, um, I don't know how many platforms Ori and the Blind Forest is on, but I played through that um, two years ago, I think. It was relatively new. It's been a while, but I played through it. I love it. The graphics, the soundtrack. Oh gosh, even if you're not a gamer, listen to the soundtrack. Watch the... Um, you can find the cutscenes and stuff on YouTube to f see the story, even if you're not, like I said, into gaming and wouldn't want to play it. Um, but listen to the soundtrack. It is phenomenal. I believe they have it on Apple Music. Um, but yeah, the sequel to that <laughs> is coming out. Um, it's called Ori and the Will of the Wisps, and I am super excited. I cannot wait to start playing it this month and it is on xbox game pass so i will have it the day it comes out <laughs> um so yeah um i will probably be doing some yarn colorways inspired by it because as i said the graphics oh my gosh the colors that they use and the style and oh it's just i love it it is so beautiful and imaginative i would have to say that after the um, forza horizon games which i love after after the forza horizon series i would say that ori the those games are probably my favorites so um yeah i'm really really psyched about that um so yeah that's what i'm going to be playing <laughs> my video game mojo has kind of been up and down a little bit it's you know it's ebb and flow like anything with knitting all of my hobbies, reading, knitting, gaming. What else do I do? <laughs> anyway, like there's always like an up and down ebb and flow kind of thing. Um, so yeah, I, um, I haven't been wanting to game as much, but I'm thinking with Ori coming out, I'll probably start playing more. There's just not enough time in the day. There's really not. And yeah, I've just, I've been wanting to knit. So I did kind of skip over, <laughs> sorry, back to what I'm watching. I did kind of skip over a little bit as far as what I'm watching. I only talked about television show. Um, I've also on YouTube, I've also been watching the latest round of um, dive vlogs by Taylor at Fiber for the People. She's been doing her um, latest process in there um, for the Oxide Club. And oh my gosh, so cool. I love watching her videos. Um, she's fun. She's like so energetic about dying and it it's so it's like looking in the mirror like just because we have the same um, like passion for dyeing yarn and the same excitement for playing in the dye pot. So it's really cool. Plus we like in her regular podcast, I watched the latest episode as well. We both have the short hair and glasses going on. Yeah. <laughs> so um, 
yeah, spoilers for next week, but I may have gotten something from her latest shop update. So um, I will save that for next week. But in the meantime, I'm enjoying the heck out of um, watching her latest videos. So definitely go check that out. Link in the description box. You probably already have subscribed to her channel, but if not, definitely go check it out. Um, of course, keeping up with uh, Knitting Vicariously, the Bowl and Vine podcast. Um, oh, videos by Chemnitz tutorials came up in my feed. So I started watching a couple of those and it's been really fun to see yet another perspective as far as dyeing yarn. Um, and she does a lot of experimentation and some of the things that she's actually experimented with, I have too. So it's been really, really cool to get like a different perspective on some of the same processes. And so, yeah, I've really been enjoying that. Um, just kind of, you know, scrolling through the videos to see, um, you know, what pops out at me and cause she has a lot of videos. So if you're interested in dyeing yarn, um, definitely check that out. She talks about a lot of different types of dyes and experiments with a lot of different types of yarns. Um, I'm definitely a little bit more focused in that I stick with, you know, one or two basic suppliers. Um, I stick with superwash yarns and acid dyes. Um, so it's, it, it's really interesting to see, you know, her doing all these things as experiments that I've never really played with before. So I'm kind of living vicariously or dying vicariously through her. So it's kind of neat. Um, oh, I've also been watching Living Big in Tiny Houses, Tiny Homes, something like that. I can't remember. Link in the description box. Um, but it's a series where this guy travels the world and interviews people who have tiny homes. And it's so cool. So yeah, I think that is it as far as what I've been watching and not reading and not playing. You get the idea. Okay guys, that's it. I'm gonna stop rambling at you now. <laughs> um, definitely stop by the Ravelry group. I am um, posting episode or um, threads every week to hopefully start kind of opening up conversation and give you guys a place to um, ask me questions and stuff. Um, I am still on the road to a thousand subscribers as far as my YouTube channel. So I am really excited to see how quickly we can start hitting milestones and get the giveaway started. Um, the first milestone will be at a hundred subscribers and we are, I believe in the eighties right now. So <clears throat> excuse me, definitely keep sharing and um, subscribing. I do have a very large percentage of people who are watching but not subscribed. So hit the button, hit the little bell to get notified when I post a new episode. Typically they are going up Wednesday, Thursday, Friday-ish, depending on if my internet's nice to me. Sometimes my podcasts don't upload and anyway. So um, I will leave you with that. Thank you so much for hanging out with me today. I look forward to having more than just socks to show you next week, hopefully. If not, then I may have to rename my podcast to There's Just Something About Socks. But anyway, <laughs> um, happy knitting, and I will see you guys next time. Bye!